This video is sponsored by Squarespace. After Mario and Luigi's rapid rise to fame, both in arcades and on NES home consoles following the original Super Mario Bros. trilogy, gamers couldn't get enough of the platforming plumbers. Mario had firmly established himself as Nintendo's official mascot, and thanks to advancing technology, fans everywhere would soon be able to see him in more places and in more detail than ever before. This is the evolution of Super Mario Part 2. In 1989, a revolutionary handheld game console hit the market, the Game Boy. Nintendo's CEO at the time, Hiroshi Yamauchi, wanted a game featuring Mario to promote the new console. So, the task fell to Nintendo R&D One, a development team headed by the Game Boy's inventor, Gunpai Yokoi. Yokoi had previously created the Game & Watch series and had worked closely with Shigeru Miyamoto. There was even a Super Mario Bros. version of the Game & Watch. But this new project wound up being the first portable Mario game made without Miyamoto's influence. It was to be called Super Mario Land, and the Game Boy launch title became available in April 1989 in Japan, in July 1989 for North American audiences, and in September 1990 for Europeans. The side-scrolling platformer is set amidst the Four Kingdoms of Sarasa Land, where the skies have turned dark and a space monster known as Tatanga has hypnotized the people of Sarasa Land so that he can control them however he likes. Tatanga also has his eyes on Princess Daisy, who he wishes to make his queen. But when Mario's made aware of a princess in distress, you know he's gonna do everything he can to rescue her and restore peace. With the help of items such as the Super Mushroom, a super flower that allows Mario to shoot projectiles, the Super Star, and hearts, which give Mario an extra life, the player must complete 12 levels split across four worlds. Reaching the higher of two exits at each level's end activates a mini-game where the player can try to get extra lives. Many reviewers saw Super Mario Land as a smaller, shorter version of the 1983 Super Mario Bros. game, which wasn't a bad thing. As Paul Rand of Computer and Video Games Magazine said, it was like having an arcade machine in your pocket, and he described the graphics as remarkable for their size. Super Mario Land went on to sell more than 18 million copies, becoming the second best-selling game in 1989 after Tetris. Fun fact! In 2011, roughly 22 years after its initial Game Boy launch, Super Mario Land was released for the Nintendo 3DS via Virtual Console as one of its opening games. The 3DS version offered an increased size, about 60% zoom, and an optional Shades of Green color palette to match the monochrome effect of the original Game Boy version. In 1990, it was time for Nintendo to upgrade its home console. Just like Mario, the next machine would adopt the Super title as well, making it the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Fittingly, a new Super Mario game would be released in time for the console's debut, with Super Mario World serving as a launch title alongside F-Zero. In Japan, Super Mario World was originally subtitled Super Mario Bros. 4 and was then re-released as Super Mario Advance 2. Confusing titles aside, the game sees Mario and Luigi return to the Mushroom World, where they decide to take a vacation with Princess Peach to Yoshi's Island in Dinosaur Land. However, soon after arriving on Yoshi's Island, Princess Peach disappears. While searching for her, Mario and Luigi find a strange egg from which a little dragon-like creature hatches. The creature, which is actually a dinosaur, calls himself Yoshi and warns of monstrous turtles who have sealed his friends inside other eggs using magic. It appears that Bowser and his minions have returned, and so the plumber's latest adventure begins. Super Mario World has two game screens, an overworld map and a level playfield. The overworld map shows several paths leading from the world's entrance to a castle, allowing players to take different routes to reach the world's goal. A multiplayer option means two players can take turns navigating the overworld map and accessing stage levels, with the first player controlling Mario and the second controlling Luigi. Gameplay mechanics are similar to previous titles in the series, but new elements are introduced, such as the ability to float with the aid of special items and to execute new types of jumps like the spin jump. The usual special items return, 
But there is a new cape feather that gives Mario or Luigi the ability to fly by way of a cape. Yoshi also serves as a companion whom Mario can ride and use to eat enemies. Super Mario World received critical and commercial acclaim. Nintendo sold over 20 million copies of the game worldwide, making it the best-selling title for the SNES. A remake of the game called Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World was released in 2001 and sold 2.5 million copies in the US alone. Game Rankings holds a review score of 94% for Super Mario World, ranking it as the 17th highest rated game of all time. Fun fact, in the Japanese version of Super Mario World, it's possible for Yoshi to eat the dolphins. However, this ability was scrapped in the American version of the game due to cultural differences. If playing on the Game Boy Advance version though, you can gobble up dolphins no matter where you are. In 1991, a cartoon series loosely based on the game was produced by DIC Entertainment in collaboration with Nintendo. The cartoon chronicles the adventures of Mario, Luigi, and Princess Toadstool in Dinosaur Land, with Yoshi and several new characters, such as Oogtar the Cave Boy making an appearance. It was the third Mario television series with 13 episodes in total. Fun fact, the final episode of the animated TV series Super Mario World, titled Mama Luigi, is by far the most popular episode of the series, partly thanks to its memes. You didn't tell me you were bringing a secret weapon, Luigi. That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario! Uh. A group of 227 artists and animators even recreated the entire episode. In total, 255 scenes were remade in different animation styles. How cool is that? I love that you can see that some animators took it seriously while others took it as a meme. House at home! You didn't tell me you were bringing a secret weapon, Luigi. That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario! Uh. The next Super Mario game to hit store shelves came in 1992 with Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. Released for the Game Boy, its play style is more similar to later titles, such as Super Mario World, with a map screen that allows the player to complete levels in a non-linear fashion. The events of six golden coins take place immediately after those of the first Super Mario Land game, and is most notable for the debut appearance of Wario. Whilst Mario was away in the first game, Wario has taken over Mario Land and our protagonist must defeat his foe by first beating six bosses and obtaining a golden coin from each. He must do this to enter the castle stolen by Wario and reclaim it, thus freeing Mario Land's inhabitants. New power-ups include a space suit that allows Mario to jump higher or to propel himself through space, a bubble that allows Mario to fly, and a carrot that transforms Mario into Bunny Mario, during which he can flap his bunny ears to glide down from long heights. Super Mario Land 2 was well received and became the fifth best-selling Game Boy title ever, with sales of over 11 million copies. Fun fact, Wario was designed by Hiroshi Kiyotaki, the same guy who created Samus Aran, the heroine of the Metroid series. Kino Wario was always intended to be the Bluto to Mario's Popeye, and his name combines that of Mario with the Japanese word Warui, meaning evil. Despite playground theories that Wario and Mario are somehow related, the Super Mario Adventures comics from the early 90s revealed that the two are actually childhood rivals, with Wario's hatred for Mario born out of pranks that the latter had played on him in his youth. Super Mario World also received a follow-up title, though oddly enough, it's not considered to be a part of the main Super Mario series. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island was released in 1995 and sees players take control of various Yoshis, as opposed to Mario or Luigi. It serves as a prequel taking place before the events in Super Mario Bros., when the twin plumbers appear as helpless infants, one of whom, Luigi, is kidnapped by Kamek and Baby Bowser. Notably, the game would be the last 2D Super Mario-related platformer for over a decade. There are also several spin-off series related to Super Mario, including those of Yoshi, Mario and Luigi, and Wario. Plus games like Mario Kart, Mario Party, and Paper Mario. 
However, since they're not a part of the Kanon Super Mario franchise, they won't be covered in this series. 1996 was a huge year for Super Mario, as the titular character expanded into a third dimension. That's right, 3D Super Mario was finally here on the Nintendo 64. Series creator Shigeru Miyamoto conceived a 3D Mario design while developing the game Star Fox for the SNES back in 1993. When the N64 console was scheduled for release, he adapted his idea for the newer console, not because of its enhanced capabilities, but because its controller had more buttons for varied gameplay. At the 1993 Consumer Electronics Show, Nintendo's booth demonstrated a talking 3D polygon animation of Mario's head, a feature that would later return in Super Mario 64's start screen. When designing characters for Super Mario 64, Miyamoto aimed to include more details than in previous games by using the Nintendo 64's power to feature all the emotions of the characters. As in previous Super Mario titles, some details were inspired by the developers' personal lives. For instance, the boos in Super Mario 64 are based on assistant director Takashi Takuza's wife, who, as Miyamoto explained, is very quiet normally, but one day, she exploded, maddened by all the time Takuza spent at work. I wonder if she knows about her in-game tribute. Super Mario 64 launched in June 1996 in Japan, September 1996 in the United States, and March 1st, 1997 internationally. The game begins with an invitation from Princess Peach for Mario to come to her castle and try the cake she has baked for him. But of course, this turns out to be a ruse of Bowser who has once again invaded the castle and imprisoned Peach by using the power of the castle's 120 power stars. The castle's paintings serve as portals to other worlds, where Bowser's minions guard these stars. Mario must therefore explore the castle, enter these worlds, and obtain enough stars to gain access to Bowser's hiding place to defeat him in battle and free the princess. Each level holds six stars, plus another for collecting 100 coins. Mario has new abilities, such as crawling, a ground pound, backflip, side flip, wall kick, long jump, and slide, among others. These moves give the player greater freedom to explore the open environments. Caps are another addition that give Mario the ability to fly, walk underwater, or walk through certain barriers. Super Mario 64 was another resounding success for Nintendo, quickly becoming the best-selling game on the N64 with over 11.9 million copies sold. The game's design, controls, and use of 3D gameplay earned it high praise and numerous awards from critics, including multiple Game of the Year honors and several mentions on lists of the greatest games of all time. Metacritic holds an aggregate review score of 94, and for me personally, this game brings back a whole lot of nostalgia and happy memories. Fun fact, the iconic voice of the animated 3D Mario head belonged to Charles Martinet, a man who would go on to voice Mario not only in the N64 game, but in numerous Super Mario games up until the present day. He is also the voice of other characters in the series, such as Luigi, Wario, Waluigi, Baby Mario, and Baby Luigi. With Squarespace, you can easily create a website that is both unique and professional, perfect for promoting your brand and generating revenue. With dozens of options for customizing your page, powerful drag and drop editor, and the ability to connect with your audience, you can easily create a website yourself. Plus, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights. This makes Squarespace the ideal all-in-one easy-to-use platform. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash flatlife to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. How would Super Mario continue to progress in the new millennium on newer consoles with even better technology? Click the video on screen to find out, and thanks for watching.